John Balmer, the Bellarmine coach, has a very definite opinion, and he was not bashful about expressing it coming into this game. He would pick South Kitsap to beat Gonzaga by a couple of touchdowns based on meeting those teams during the year. That is a bold prediction. Gonzaga doesn't believe it. South Kitsap hopes to prove it. Here are the Wolves now as they introduce the starting lineup. Number 83 for South Kitsap is Jim Reeves, 181-pound senior, about to be introduced. That's Ed Fisher to the left there, just out of your picture. As the South Kitsap Wolves are introduced. Reeves, as I said, number 83. The first player to be introduced in the AAA championship game. He's a tight end for South Kitsap. Number 77 is Mike Lamont, a 207-pound junior. Number 56 is Dan Flahip, a 184-pound junior. The center is Tristan Roach, a 181-pound senior. Number 63 is Kent Wood, a 164-pound junior. Number 64 is Glenn Cooper, a 182-pound junior. Number 51 is Ken Carlson, a 194-pound senior. This is number 17, Kelly Wakefield, the veteran quarterback for the Wolves, 165-pound senior. Kevin Krause, a 185-pound senior, the tailback. Shea McPherson, 166-pound junior, also a running back. Number 85 is Bill Meadows, 152-pound senior for the Wolves. And here's number 87, Buck Simmons, 167-pound senior for South Kitsap. Jim Shillam, the place kicker, 160-pound senior for South Kitsap's Wolves. Number one ranked in the state. Number four in the nation by USA Today. Bart Lovely, an outstanding defensive player. Number seven, and Steve Nelson, who also plays defensively, has not been able to play offensively much of late. He's their outstanding ball carrier. And that's Jody Martin, number 99, 166-pound senior. And at end, who's a terrific player, Craig Hughes, number 67, is a 195-pound junior. Brian Tainatongo, 192-pound senior. Don Busenbach, an all-state lineman, 229 pounds and a senior, perhaps the outstanding player on their squad. David Carter, number 33 for South Kitsap. Number 59 is Steve Johnson, a 187-pound senior. David Cook, number 25, is a 186-pound junior. David Rill, a 201-pound junior for South Kitsap. And the rest of the South Kitsap Wolves, as there are the offensive and defensive starters. And here comes South Kitsap, unbeaten. Now for the Bull Pups of Gonzaga Prep, who lost to their opener to Coeur d'Alene 23-17. And Coeur d'Alene won the state of Idaho's championship 55-14 over Twin Falls. Here's number 76 for Gonzaga, Paul Sweeney. Number 63, Pete Mertens, a 181-pound senior. Number 50 is Drew Davis, a 176-pound junior. Number 61 is Matt Davis, a 183-pound senior. Number 78 is Mark Scruggen. Number 80 is Mark Maktoff, 195-pound senior, may be the outstanding player in their squad. He's a great one. Rob Simpson, number 38, 178-pound junior. That's Dan McKenna, 183-pound senior and a fine runner. Archie McKenna, number 37 for Gonzaga Prep, a 176-pound senior. Aaron Robb, 172-pound sophomore for Gonzaga Prep. Fred Ulowitz, their outstanding wishbone quarterback, 186-pound senior. He runs the option beautifully. Number 44 is Jim Etter, 186-pound senior. Joe Mark, number 75 for Gonzaga Prep. 
Number 53 is Nick Volk, 184-pound sophomore. John Cipolla, a 190-pound senior for the Bullpups. Mark Schmidt, a 185-pound senior. Pat O'Rourke, a 181-pound junior. Bill Jekyll, a 185-pound senior. Jamie Fitzgerald, a deep threat as a receiver, a 168-pound senior. That's Kevin Corbett, a 162-pound senior. And here come Don Anderson, the coach, and the rest of Gonzaga Prep. Gonzaga Prep won the Greater Spokane title. They lost to Shadle Park 14 to nothing. And uh, since that time, they have won six straight, including playoff wins over Kamiakin 40 to 17, over Walla Walla 19 to nothing, and over Bellarmine 16 to nothing. South Kitsap has won them all. They beat Centralia 41 to nothing. Stadium of Tacoma 51 to nothing. Boss of Tacoma 27 to 10. Mount Tahoma 17 to 6. Nathan Hale of Seattle 44 to nothing. Bellarmine Prep 17 to nothing. Wilson of Tacoma 55 to nothing. Lincoln of Tacoma 27 to 7. Bremerton 51 to nothing. Then in the playoffs they. Blasted Oak Harbor 44 to 14. They had the scare of their lives before coming from behind to beat Sammamish 14 to 10. They then blanked Kentwood 12 to nothing last week in a game in which the Kentwood Conquerors used the wishbone offense. And uh, we'll tell you some interesting statistics as the game moves along. For Gonzaga Prep, out there is number uh, 70, and that's John Cipolla. Number 12 also out there is Dan McKenna. And number 80 is Mark Mactoff. For South Kitsap, number 99 is Jody Martin, their fine receiver. And uh, number 66 is Brian Tainatongo. So they are the captains for King Bowl Six and the championship game. Stacy Westring works with me on today's game. And Stacy, what about these two teams? South Kitsap, I don't believe, has been to the championship round, but they've been in the playoffs, and Gonzaga has been to the championship game. What do you know about them? Doug, we're looking at, once again, a big defensive battle, as we saw in the double-A uh, championship game just previous to this one. South Kitsap has a 3-4 defense and has had six shutouts this year and only six TDs scored against them all season. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Gonzaga Bullpups. They run a 5-2 defense, and they're very, very strong against the pass coverage. Their big nose guard, John Cipolla, is a league leader with 93 solo tackles and 52 assists. As I said, they do have a strong secondary. Might put a little damper to the airwaves of South Kitsap. They have won their last six in a row and the last two by shutouts. And last week against Bellarmine Prep, they intercepted seven passes to clinch that victory. Incidentally, Gonzaga did not have much success running against the Bellarmine defense, uh, getting uh, only a total in the game of uh, 68 yards against Bellarmine rushing. As on the other side of the coin, Kentwood, with that wishbone offense, gained 204 yards rushing against South Kitsap, but didn't gain a single yard passing. So it's going to be very, very interesting here, as it's definitely a defensive struggle. South Kitsap highly rated, as high as fourth in the nation. You'll see some gold helmets, you'll see some maroon helmets on that South Kitsap squad as they award gold helmets for uh, certain categories. Neither of these teams keeping a lot of statistics. Their statistic is winning. Gonzaga will kick off and John Please, 163 pound junior, will kick off for the Bullpups. Talking to um, some Spokane coaches before the game and they said that one thing to remember when Shadle Park shut down Gonzaga 14 to nothing in the middle of the season, they were without Fitzgerald and Mactoff and those are two key players. And so um, that perhaps had something to do with it, although all due credit must go to Shadle Park for blanking the bullpups in that one. Since that time, Gonzaga's beaten University 19 to seven, North Central 35 to 12, Rogers 28 to nothing, and then those three playoff wins that I told you about. What team will replace the championship team now for that AAA title? As last year it was Richland. 
Tahoma in 1980 and 1979, Sahomish in 1978. And here's that kick now to Nelson across the 26 to the 27 yard line. Steve Nelson, 175 pound senior. Nelson was met by number 87, Darren Bennett of the Bullpups. Bennett's 180 pound senior and those are the white clad wolves of South Kitsap. It'll be Wakefield operating at quarterback. Let's see who his tailback is. It is expected to be Kraus. Give is to the fullback and right up the middle pops uh, South Kitsap's, I think that's number 33. We're gonna have to check it. And that would be David Carter. And he's got five yards in the play. Second down, five yards to go for South Kitsap. Backs are in an eye formation. Wakefield with wide receivers to either side. They give to the tailback, and Shea McPherson, number 23, 166-pound junior, is whacked at the line of scrimmage. South Kitsap cheerleader looking on there. I was going to say, Doug, whacked indeed by number 80 of the Bullpups, Mark Maktoff. He's the all-stater there for Gonzaga Prep. 195-pound senior linebacker for the Bullpups. They'll use a lot of different defenses, but uh, much of that defense is built around uh, Sapola, their fine nose guard. Third down five for South Kitsap. Wakefield sits in under center, has trouble with the snap, picks it up, gets a yard or two, that's the most. South Kitsap will be forced to punt. There you see Go Wolves go, and Wakefield, the quarterback, coming off now for South Kitsap. Gonzaga will send Dan McKenna, 183-pound senior, back to the 22-yard line to receive the kick. South Kitsap's Wade Rockford punting it. McKenna at the 25, gets a tackle free, 35-40, 45-50, 40 yard line to the 38. The putter, Rockford had to make the tackle as Gonzaga comes up with a big play right off the reel and McKenna. You're going to see it again. McKenna right there at the 25. He's got five of them, 10 of them, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 37 yard punt return by McKenna. Ball is at the South Kitsap 37 yard line and here's a give up the middle. McKenna for two, maybe three yards to the 32 yard line. The quarterback for Gonzaga is Fred Ulowitz, a 6'2", 186-pound senior. McKenna at the tailback spot. Ulowitz getting his play from Don Anderson. He's got Maktoff wide to the right. He's got Simpson wide left. The back's in a wishbone. And there's penalty flags down as the play gets underway. Archie McKenna... 176-pound senior is the fullback in that wishbone. And uh, number 25, Aaron Robb, 172-pound sophomore, the other back in there. Apprehensive South Kitsap cheerleaders. Five-yard penalty against Gonzaga for illegal procedure. It'll be second down and 12. is on a wing to the right now as they've got half of that wishbone behind quarterback Ulowitz. He runs the keeper along the line of scrimmage, keeps it. He's at the 35, goes to the 30. Fred Ulowitz who runs the option well and Gonzaga gets about seven yards on the play. Ulowitz was finally stopped by number 45, David Rill, who's that all-stater middle linebacker for the South Kitsap Wolves. And we'll have a little story about him a little later. South Kitsap's taken a step up each year. Quarterfinals two years ago, semifinals last year, finals this year. 
Gonzaga's been here before. We watched him against Sumner, losing the championship test a few years back. Third down and four for Gonzaga. Ulowitz on the keeper. He fights his way for the first down at the 24-yard line. Weather conditions much improved for Gonzaga this week. They played in the cold and the snow. There you see Ulowitz along the line against Bellarmine Prep at Joe Albee Stadium in Spokane last week. That initial hit was number three, Jim Schillam, and then finally brought down by 67, Craig Hughes. Hughes, 195-pound junior, hopped aboard after Schillam slowed him up, but it's first and 10, Gonzaga. South Kitsap, 24-yard line. Fakes to the uh, fullback, now wheels back to the other side and manages to get a yard or two out of a broken play. Ulowitz, the quarterback. Kevin Krause and Dave Rill along on the play there. Ball just outside the 20. The Wolves undefeated. The state's other unbeaten teams both fell by the wayside in King Bowl six as Franklin Pierce was spilled in the uh, game preceding this one by Arlington by a score of 16 to three and Clallam Bay was dumped by Lacrosse Washtukna in an earlier game. Here is Ulowitz again. The Wolves are there to swarm all over him. Met right at the line of scrimmage by 66, Brian Tangatonga. Tangatonga, number 66, is 192-pound senior, and he and Don Busenbark, number 79, are the two strong men on that South Kitsap team. John Bomber, the Bellarmine coach, whose team played both of these teams, feels that those two players could be the difference between the squads. Third down, seven. Wide to the left now for... Gonzaga, Jamie Fitzgerald. On third and seven, Yulowitz fakes, back to pass, looking, got knocked off. Beautiful defensive play by Bart Lovely of South Kitsap. Oh, do they ever come close to connecting on this one? Watch it. Maktoff is now open, watch Lovely. Well, you didn't get a good shot of him, but he did it, I'll tell you. Ball back at the 21 yard line, fourth and seven. And a field goal unit comes into the game. John, please, brings his tee in. We'll set it down at the 27 and a half yard line. We'll call it the 28, making it a 38 yard field goal attempt out of the kick of Paul Casa. Please to boot it. High, long, very close and good. We'll call it a 38-yard field goal. It was between 37 and 38 yards, and a beauty for John Please of Gonzaga. And Gonzaga leads it three to nothing here in the opening quarter. And there are bull pup rooters across the way. Gonzaga Prep comes into this game with a six straight winning streak, along with the last two of their games have been two shutouts, Doug. Fisher, the expressive coach of the South Kitsap Wolves out there with his team. Urging them now to get themselves going as South Kitsap with its lofty ranking and perhaps incentive on the side of Gonzaga trails now by a score of three to nothing. Tell you a little bit about the evaluations by Bellarmine coach John Bomber, whose team lost 17 to nothing to South Kitsap and 16 to nothing to Gonzaga. He thinks that South Kitsap has the edge in passing, although Gonzaga's Mark Maktoff is an outstanding receiver. In running, he says Don McKenna is Gonzaga's bread and butter runner, but South has at least four tailbacks in that caliber. Nelson, Carter, Rill, and McPherson. The offensive line, Gonzaga, he gives an edge. He said they may not be as big, but they're well coached. But it's a toss-up on the defensive line. Gives Gonzaga perhaps an edge in defensive backs, but South has maybe an edge in experience and in kicking. And in size and strength, he gives South Kitsap a decided edge. So that's just the opinion of a man who's played both these teams. 
but it's an interesting one. And right now, Gonzaga Prep, opinion or no, leads three to nothing. And please, fires it short and hits, and it's a free ball, and a wild scramble forward, and Gonzaga has it! South Kitsap pulled a booboo. Number 11 for Gonzaga is Pat O'Rourke, and he almost took it into scores. The ball bounced in front of Steve Nelson, actually took a reverse bounce. You'll see it right here. See that? And Nelson then can't get it. And look at the ever-present Pat O'Rourke rip to the 11-yard line, or 21-yard line, excuse me. So Gonzaga has seized momentum by the tail early in the AAA championship game. Yulowitz at quarterback. Takes to McKenna, keeps, and gets to the 19-yard line. Good open field tackle that time by Tom O'Brien of South Kitsap. Or was that Carter, number 33? We'll have to wait and see. You're going to get another look at it. There's Yulowitz. It's Carter. Gain of a yard at second and nine, just inside the 20. Fitzgerald wide to the left. Yulowitz has his backs in a wishbone now. Rob McKenna and McKenna. Yulowitz fakes, rolling to throw, looking for McPherson deep. Struggle for the interception. Nelson's got it for South Kitsap. Steve Nelson, 175 pound senior, been one of their leading ball carriers all season, has been able to play only defense the last few weeks because of injury. Watch him win the wrestling match now as that's Fitzgerald down there to try for it. Look at it, one hands it and he wins it going down. Oh, that's a great play. Both kids in a fierce struggle for the football. Wow, there's been excitement in the early going of this one. Gonzaga and South Kitsap, two giants among the AAA powers of the state. They've come all the way to King Bowl six. South Kitsap on the touchback at its own 20. McPherson's operating at tailback. Wakefield, the quarterback, pitching out now to McPherson, turning the corner at the 21 and goes to the 24. Jekyll was there to meet him. Bill's a, a six foot, 185 pound senior. Carter, the fullback, is the lead blocker on that play. And now into the game comes Kevin Krause to replace McPherson at tailback. Ed Fisher will run a lot of tailbacks at you during the course of a game. Martin wide to the right. Shillam wide left as their wide receivers. Here's the give now to that tailback in there, Kraus. Kraus socks his way out near the 28-yard line. 4.19 to go in the first quarter. Gonzaga leads South Kitsap 3 to nothing. Joe Mark led that group of tacklers on the last play. Joe wears 75 for the dark blue. Roach over that ball at center. Wakefield gives to the fullback, and Carter socks his way near the 30-yard line, and close to the first down, it appears just short. They're going to call for the measurement, and the chain gang will decide on this one as South Kitsap goes for its first first down of the game. 3.52 to go in the first quarter. Gonzaga has kept the Wolves pinned back with a couple of big plays. South Kitsap came up with a big defensive play of its own right there. It's very close, inches shy of the first down at the 30. See what this powerful South Kitsap team decides. They're deep in their own territory, but we've seen no sign of a punter as yet. Apparently they will go for it. Early in the go 
going south. Kitsap in a gamble at its own 30-yard line. Krause the tailback behind Carter. Wakefield calls his plays, turns, gives to Krause. He's got the first down to the 33-yard line. With the confidence of winners, South Kitsap's unbeaten Wolves go for it and make it. So it's first and 10 at the 34. South Kitsap out of the huddle. Gonzaga right now in a six-man front. Wakefield back to pass, fires for the sidelines to Shillam. He's got it, and a catch at the 40-yard line out of bounds. Shillam's 160-pound senior. Get about six yards on the call. Second down and four. Wakefield has trouble, but then gives to Carter, and he fights his way for two or three yards and near the first down at the 42 and a half yard line. David Carter, 174 pound senior for South Kitsap. Pulling Carter down was number 85, Mark Schmidt, a 6'2", 185 pound senior. Excuse me, say South Kitsap located in Port Orchard, plays out of the Narrows League, consists primarily of the Tacoma schools and Bremerton and South Kitsap. They have an enrollment of 1,677 students. Wakefield on fourth and short yardage, gives to Krause, he's gonna be spilled. Make it third and short yardage. Good defensive play by Maktoff that time. He's a dandy performer, there's no question about that. So it's fourth and two and the Wolves send their punting unit in. Gonzaga plays in the Greater Spokane League. An enrollment of 1,000. Proud athletic tradition at Gonzaga Prep in Spokane over the years. Wade Rockford back to kick, stands at his own 29-yard line. High snap from center, has trouble controlling, and he's greeted by Gonzaga players, and South Kitsap continues to have all kinds of problems. Bill Meadows, or excuse me, not Bill Meadows, Mark Schmidt on the tackle for Gonzaga. Along uh, with the ever-present number 70, John Sapola. I'm looking at uh, the opposite 85 when I said Meadows, he's for South Kitsap. Well, so far, the bounces of the football have gone Gonzaga's way, but the Bull Pups have exerted the pressure that's created them. South Kitsap digging an early hole with 1.58 to go in the game, and there's a worried Ed Fisher on his knees. And that's South Kitsap. There's a number one, a real live number one, along with the South Kitsap Wolf. <laughs> Okay, the ball is at the South Kitsap 35-yard line. Gonzaga leads three to nothing, and South Kitsap had to turn away another bid in the end zone. So the pups have kept the pressure on. They got off to a great start against Bellerman and then just left it up to the defense from that point on and how they can play defense. Yulowitz is at quarterback. Archie McKenna, 176-pound senior at fullback. Dan McKenna, 183-pound senior, as you're looking at Don Anderson across the way, is the uh, other running back, along with Aaron Robb, number 25, the big sophomore. Well, 172-pound sophomore, good size. Youngster as a soft. Yulowitz rolling left. Keeps the football. He's at the 30, 25, 20, 15-yard line. Yulowitz, the quarterback. Well, they said coming into the game that he could run the option, and he has shown you how. You take a look at this. Fake to the fullback, and now with the trailing back catching Lovely's attention, he just scoots inside, and Carter has to come back to make the stop. First down, Gonzaga. South Kitsap, 15. Yulowitz again, second man through. That's McKenna to the 11. Jim Schillam along with 45, David Rill up on the play. 
McKenna a little slow in getting up. I don't think it's anything serious, just a shoelace. So he's back to the huddle, and it's second down and five. Gonzaga threatening to pop in front now. Hey, there's a South Kitsap rooter, <laughs> I'll tell you. He knows where the action is, doesn't he? Ah, oh, what you see at high school football. There's excitement everywhere. And here in the King Bowl, it reigns supreme. Yulowitz rolling right, faking the uh, pitch out and fighting to the six or seven yard line. On the replay, you'll see that the back is real close to him, so he decides he'd rather keep it. And the Wolves hang on there. It's third down and a yard at the six. 29 seconds to go in the first quarter. Gonzaga prep sends Fitzgerald wide to the left. Make it Rob Simpson wide to the left. Here's a give right up the middle. The fullback's got the first down, Archie McKenna. Pops to the three yard line. It'll be first down and goal to go for Gonzaga, leading three to nothing over South Kitsap. There was some early pressure applied on that play to Ulowitz by number 66. The defensive, uh, I believe right in the middle there, the defensive center, Brian Tingatongo. And Ulowitz, as he brings the team up, has time run out at the end of the first quarter. The score is Gonzaga three, South Kitsap nothing. Showtime celebrates the season with innovation, quality, and variety. All eyes turn for Showtime with more movies and original programs. See Tap starring Timothy Hutton and... Updated ski information 24 hours a day. Simply dial 922-1144. The Ski Line from 96 Apple FM. We're set to go with the second quarter. Those are South Kitsap fans urging on Don Busenbark to stop the Gonzaga Bullpups. But so far it's been Gonzaga's day here in the Kingdom. We start the second quarter, and it is first down, goal to go. They're three yards away from a touchdown. Leading by a field goal. And this Gonzaga team is a team on fire right at the moment. Ulowitz has been impressive at quarterback. He's 6'2", 186 pounds. And college coaches who run that wishbone offense certainly are drooling here in the kingdom tonight. Gonzaga has Rob Simpson wide left. Yulowitz calling his plays. Turns, gives to McKenna, thrashes his way to the one. Tina Tongo, I think, hanging on again, number 66. Along with Bart Lovely, number seven in the white. There you see the second man through, McKenna hammering his way down there. Ball second down goal to go at the South Kitsap one yard line. The Bullpups in control right now. Yulowitz calling something out from the line of scrimmage on a keeper, cannot get in. Wow, is he hit by that South Kitsap defensive line. Carter leads the charge. I don't think he'll do it this time either, Stacy, as we see our replay. Okay. 
So it's third down and goal at the two yard line as he loses one on the carry. Ulewitz again. Faking to the fullback. Given to the fullback and there's no place to go. Great goal line stand by South Kitsap. Brings up fourth down and two. They will go for the field goal as Please, who has a 38-yarder, comes in again. Here's Please kick. It is high enough and good. And it's six to nothing as Please kicks the field goal. Gonna have to check the distance for you. It was around 22 yards. And Gonzaga has taken. Did they score? They didn't score the touchdown, did they? They did score. Oh, my goodness. How can I blow a touchdown? That was the extra point try. My goodness, I have to apologize. Right. Stacy, why didn't you jump in? <laughs> I saw the fullback down, and I called him down. I've been broadcasting for a few years, and I don't think that I can ever recall blowing a touchdown, but I did. I'm sure South Kinsap wouldn't have minded Wow. That. McKenna, the second man through, got the TD, and I simply committed a cardinal mistake and took my eyes off the ball. It is a 10 to nothing game. And you folks in Spokane, I gotta apologize to you. I just plain blew it. McKenna got the TD, 35 yard drive in seven plays. Somebody kick me. It's been a long day of football, but not that long here in the kingdom. So the Gonzaga Bull Pups have hit the board as they please with four of the points and McKenna with the TD from two yards out. Here's please with the TD with the uh, kickoff now. Nelson down at the 10. Breaks free at the 25-30 and out to the 40-yard line, Steve Nelson of South Kitsap. We've got an explosive football game. John, please, finally brought him down, and John is a 5'11", 163-pound junior. Ball at the 40-yard line, South Kitsap possession. There you see Nelson on his replay. Gonzaga has stunned South Kitsap, leading 10 to nothing. Here's Wakefield back to throw. Completes the pass in the flat to Shillam across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Kevin Corbett makes the tackle on the play for Gonzaga. Wakefield has hit two for two, and that'll up his 58% passing average. I'm still embarrassed. <laughs> How do you miss a touchdown? Okay, well, we'll forget it and go on to greater things. Here's Wakefield faking, now throwing long for Martin. Knocked away by Gonzaga's 33. Jamie Fitzgerald. That's a favorite pass of Wakefield to lob it up in alley-oop fashion. And Martin, last week against Kentwood, twice hauled in those alley-oop passes to decide the game, but not that time. He couldn't win the wrestling match with Fitzgerald. Third down and about three and a half. Pitch goes back now to Kraus running the weak side. He's out to about the 50, and I think he has the first down across the way. Jim Etter, you're going to see it again now as Wakefield pitches to Kraus. He does have the first down. 10.06 remaining in the first half. It's a 10 to nothing football game on Gonzaga Prep in front. 
going back to that Gonzaga touchdown, I guess it's a credit to the ball handling of Ulewitz to see the play end like I saw it. <laughs> anyway, here's Krause wide to the left, and he gets a couple at the 48-yard line in Gonzaga territory. Second down eight. Gonzaga with 10.02 to go now in the first half. Gaining the upper hand early against South Kitsap. Wakefield calls those plays. Pitches back and here we have a reverse now and Shillam's gonna pass. Martin out there, but the wrestling match is again in favor of Fitzgerald. South Kitsap trying a bit of deception on that play. Fitzgerald did make an excellent defending play on there. You'll see it again here on the screen. Martin is a rangy kid, and Fitzgerald, who stands um, six foot, scales the heights to keep him from getting it. We mentioned the big threat of Jody Martin last week. He, he caught 109 yards, the total 122 passing yards. That was against Kentwood. Here is Wakefield giving up the middle. Now Nelson's in a tailback, and he whacks his way to the 41-yard line. Not enough for the first down, but close. And South Kitsap, which is fourth and one, may go for it because that's been their pattern so far. And Shillam comes back in with the play from Ed Fisher and his staff. 9.32 to go in the first half. Martin wide right, Shillam wide left. Fourth and one, South Kitsap. Wakefield turns, gives to the tailback. Nelson stopped short. That was Bill Jekyll, number 43, right on the play. Well, that's a great expression of confidence on the part of South Kitsap. But Gonzaga Prep looked at it with disdain. And wow, did the bull pups ever come up with a play. Watch it right here. Bill Jekyll, number 43, leading that charge, and Gonzaga takes over at its own 41-yard line. Count on me to watch Ulowitz a little closer this time. It's that deceptive ball here. Yeah. Right? Pitches back to McKenna. Boomer McKenna trying to turn the corner, flips around the 45 and goes out of bounds across the way. Gonzaga has looked sharp in this one. 8.51 to go in the first half. They lead it 10 to nothing. Backs in a wishbone now for Gonzaga. Yulowitz turning the corner. Decides to keep and cuts into the 50, goes to the 49-yard line and very near to the first down. As you see on the replay, Fred does an excellent job of making decisions. See, he drove lovely to the outside and then just cut right back in. You run that option on the wishbone well and you get into a lot of situations like two-on-one in basketball. And that's when you make the right fake and do the right thing. And he has done it more often than not in this game. It's third down and less than a yard. Give us to McKenna, and the second man through is at the 47-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. Now you see that fake to the fullback, takes it away, and... That's 45, David Rill, the All-State linebacker. It's a classic lesson in why you got to watch those ball carriers on this Gonzaga team. As I mentioned, Kentwood gave guns or gave South Kitsap some problems with that wishbone last week, but gained a lot of yardage and just couldn't do much with it. Gonzaga has been most successful thus far. There is McKenna up the middle across the 45 to the 42-yard line. 
on that quick opener at left guard and left tackle. Flipped head over heel by number 25, David Cook, 5'11", 186 pound junior of the Wolves. Pete Mertens got a good block on that play and so did uh, Paul Sweeney. Back to throw is Ulewicz, man wide open, it's Maktoff. Can't quite get him at the 10 yard line. Jody Martin defending on the play for South Kitsap, but Gonzaga had Maktoff behind the defense with 7.04 to go in the half. It's third down and seven. And Yulowich decides to take a timeout and the Gonzaga Bullpups want to talk over their third down play. Seven minutes, four seconds to go. The game has been played on the South Kitsap side of the field most of the way. Gonzaga getting a 38-yard field goal out of John Please with 4.08 left in the quarter for the three to nothing lead. And then traveling 35 yards in seven plays to score with 10.41 to go uh, in the uh, half. And with Please kicking the point, Gonzaga is in front 10 to nothing. A game that I tried hard to make six to nothing. <laughs> and that's enough about that, I guess. Yulowitz. Has been the outstanding performer in this game thus far. He has run the wishbone to perfection. Gonzaga out of the huddle on third down and long. Simpson wide to the left. Yolowitz going to run the option that way. Leaps over tacklers to the 35-yard line and should have the first down. You watch him run this play perfectly. Now watch him get up there to get the first down. Talk about being in command. The Gonzaga quarterback has taken charge. Fitzgerald wide to the right. Yulowitz coming this way now. Cut, keeps 30, 25, 20, 17 yard line. Fred Yulowitz of Gonzaga. And he was finally brought down by number seven, Bart Lovely, along with 25, David Cook. He's just having a day. And give credit to that Gonzaga line. Definitely allowing the option play to come out in perfection. McKenna, McKenna, and Rob in the wishbone behind Yolowitz. Not too far that time for the fullback. Bark leading the tacklers. And McKenna cannot get underway. Call it second and ten. Ball just outside the 15-yard line. This time, Fitzgerald is wide to the right. Here's Ulewicz coming to the left. He's at the 10. He's down near the five-yard line. And that'll be another Gonzaga first down. Now he's at the 10, and Carter has to hang on with Martin. First down goal to go for Gonzaga. Oh, 
Fitzgerald wide left. Yolowitz faking, giving to McKenna. He gets only to the line of scrimmage and is speared there. Brill on the play. We'll see it again here. Good tackling job that time by South Kitsap's number 45, David Rill, a 201-pound junior linebacker. We got 4.37 to go in the first half. Gonzaga has taken the play away over tout touted South Kitsap. Simpson is into the game, and he's wide to the left. Yulowitz to McKenna to the one-yard line. Scramble for the ball. I don't. I think he was down before it got loose, and he was. So McKenna is at the one for Gonzaga. And it's third down goal to go with four minutes left in the first half. The bull pups, 10. South Kitsap, nothing. And Gonzaga right now looking to had that margin. Yolowitz looking over a virtual eight-man line. There you see the second man through. It's Rob the sophomore. And Aaron Rob gets the TD. And here we see the TD again. Yeah, I'm going to look at this one twice since I missed the first one. 344 to go. Maybe they'll add those two, seven points you missed the first time. We're in the first half, and Gonzaga has really impressed. Pleased to try the point. Kick is perfect. It is a 17 to nothing Gonzaga lead with 344 to go in the first half. Got a penalty flag down. They talk to Gonzaga. So we may have a penalty against the Wolves on the kickoff. That was a 59-yard drive in 12 plays for the touchdown. And Gonzaga, prep of Spokane, has really impressed here in Seattle. Ball will be kicked from South Kitsap's 45-yard line. There you see the replay of it again. kickoff on this kind of a situation he probably won't boot it as long as he can just kick it down there around the goal line and let Nelson and McPherson have a shot at it and try to keep South Kitsap penned up the remainder of the first half the unbeaten Wolves of South Kitsap in deep trouble here in the first half at the Kingdom He's going to kick it right out of the end zone and let him take it at the 20. So there'll be no return. And with 3.44 to go in the half, South Kitsap on the attack from their own 20-yard line. Gonzaga setting up defensively now as South Kitsap set to go. Wakefield giving off to the second man through and the bull pups say no, no. That tailback can go nowhere. Hit right on the line of sc a scrimmage by John Cipolla. So Steve Nelson, as you see in the replay here, gets it. And the blue shirts are just there. 
I think Don Anderson's got his team ready, and talking to the folks in Spokane, they say every year his team peaks toward the end of the season. They've won their last six, and they're at their best here in the kingdom. Here's Wakefield on a keeper, trying to throw and does beautifully. Out to the 40-yard line to South Kitsap's number 83, Jim Reeves. Looked like Wakefield was going down, and he fired that football. That pressure was applied by Sapoli, you'll see on your screen. See Kelly here now faking and then coming out. Ah, there is good pressure right there. Wow, he's being dragged down and he hits the tight end Reeves beautifully and they've got the first down out at the 40. 3.06 to go in the half. And there's Fitzgerald South, up to make the play. Excuse me, stay. South Kitsap could get a real lift now if they could put a drive together because they have been stunned. There's no question. Here's Nelson going to the 47-yard line. South Kitsap, a big, strong football team and... They've been rated number one for most of the season in the state, and USA Today rates them number four in the nation. Well, that's pretty hard to evaluate, but nonetheless a tribute to their program. Second down and three. Out of the huddle they come. Shillam wide left. Wakefield pitches back to Nelson, trying to skirt the short side. He's across the 50 to the 47-yard line for a first down for South Kitsap. 2.56 to go in the first half. Kraus now comes into the game at tailback. Nelson, as you see, running out of sideline, but nonetheless getting the first down. Met by a group of tacklers led by number 70, once again the ever-present John Sapoya. Wakefield to pass. He's got Martin over the middle, but the ball's in the air and incomplete. Wakefield tried to hit Martin in that slant pattern, and something that doesn't happen very often, Martin doesn't hang on. Second down, 10. Ball at the Gonzaga, 47. 2.53 remaining. Timeout taken as Fisher comes out to talk to the South Kitsap Wolves. There you're taking a look at Gonzaga Rooters across the way, at the moment anyway, a little bit on the quiet side, but nonetheless quite satisfied as we head into the final 253 of the first half. is the South Kitsap cry, but things have gone sour at the moment for the team from Port Orchard. Past AAA state champions here in the King Bowl, as I mentioned last year, Richland. Mount Tahoma the two previous years, Snohomish in 1978, Sumner in 77 beat Gonzaga for the title, Snohomish won it in 76, Foss of Tacoma in 75, Blanchett beat Mount Tahoma with Joe Steele in the 1974 game, and Kentridge won the 1973 game. So Richland last year turning the tables on Western Washington teams for the first time, and Gonzaga prep this year now really has turned it around on South Kitsap. Wakefield back to pass. Faking, looking, now firing high along for Martin. Overthrows him at the 10 as Martin and Fitzgerald were in a foot race. Martin seemed to have a stride or so as they faked the pass and drew the defense up a little bit and then lobbed one. Brings up third down, 10 yards to go. 2.46 left in the first half. That has been almost all Gonzaga. Martin wide right. Wakefield gives up the middle to Krause and he stumbles as he gets to the 41 yard line and on third down with Gonzaga perhaps looking for the pass. South Kitsap tried to cross them up but did not. Ball down at the 42 yard line. It'll be fourth down and five. Shillam comes in along with Nelson. As we saw, 43 offensively met 43 defensively, which is Bill Jekyll of the Bullpups. 
South Kitsap down 17 to nothing. We'll go for it. Lobbing the ball, and it's incomplete. As he tried to hit Nelson, but Nelson was hung up. Back at the 40-yard line in South Kitsap's Wakefield pleads for pass interference. So the incomplete pass turns the ball over to Gonzaga with 2.10 to go in the half and the ball at the 42-yard line. Ball pops out of there. Rob Sester is wide right. Simpson wide left. Yulowitz faking to the fullback and keeping and what a first half he has had as he crosses the 50 to the 49 yard line. The Gonzaga line right at the moment winning the battle of the trenches without any question as timeout is taken. Second down in a yard with 154 to go in the half. Anderson's out to talk to his team. And he's got to be a very proud head coach at Gonzaga Prep right at the moment, though there's still more than a half of this one to go. Gonzaga came to play. As I mentioned, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho won the Idaho State title this year. They beat Gonzaga 23 to 17 in the season's opener. And Coeur d'Alene, in going through an unbeaten season, went down to Twin Falls. And there was a lot of talk at Twin Falls about their team being the favorite. Coeur d'Alene won at 55 to 14. So that gives you an idea of the strength of that particular football team. And Gonzaga is much improved as the year has gone along. The very impressive Fred Ulowitz, the quarterback of Gonzaga. Faking, keeping. He's gonna fight his way for about a yard and it's really the all they needed, but the first time in the game they've really contained Ulowitz. He's at the 47 yard line and that appears to be enough for a first down. And that was Don Busenbach on the play defensively. So Busenbach makes the tackle with 134 left. Got slowed down a couple three times. And they are gonna move the clock, or move the chains. Took them a long time to make that decision, but it was obvious it was a first down, and now they're set. And the clock starts, 1.30 to go in the first half. Mactoff wide to the right and Simpson wide left. Could have a passing situation now on first and 10. Nope, they give up the middle instead and popping uh, straight ahead is number 40 and that's uh, Steve Eugenio. 154 pounds senior at fullback for Gonzaga. There you're gonna see it again, the little guy fires through a nice hole there. He also has a brother on the team, number 41, Dave Eugenio. Gonzaga prep on second and five with just 50 seconds to go in the half, leading 17 to nothing over South Kitsap's number one ranked and unbeaten Wolves. Give up the middle now and a short gainer on the play, and I think that is Eugenio again, and it is. Stop short once again by Dom Fusenbark and number 59, Steve Johnson, a 6'1", 187-pound senior. 27 seconds left in the half. Gonzaga right now not stopping the clock with 18 seconds to go. Gonna pass and it is knocked out. Trying for Maktoff over the middle. David Rill, I think, stepped in front of it. Number 45, Carter was also there. 13 seconds left in the half. Ball is at the 41 yard line. Gonzaga prep 17. South Kitsap without a point. 
And the Wolves find themselves in this position for the first time the entire season. Wide receivers both ways, Simpson and Maktoff. Yulowitz calls plays as South Kitsap has seven men up front. They decide to audibleize at the line and give to the fullback. There's a big pile up and maybe a fumble. At the 41 yard line with 10 seconds to go, South Kitsap has recovered. You're gonna see it again now. Oh, he never does have control. South Kitsap comes up with a football, maybe time for a last gasp pass play or two. And the Wolves decide they wanna make sure what they're gonna do. 17 to nothing, Gonzaga. And the Bullpups will drop the uh, secondary deep now as South Kitsap's expected to throw. Gonzaga on a field goal by Please, two extra points by Please, and touchdowns by Rob and McKenna. Arlington won the double-A title with a 16-3 win over unbeaten Franklin Pierce. And Gonzaga has soared in front of South Kitsap. Gonzaga in a virtual three-man line right now. As Wakefield looks over the defense, sends Martin wide to the right. He's going to be double teamed. Shillam wide to the left. There's a give to the tailback. Nelson tries to get to the outside. He goes to the 50, to the 46-yard line. That's as far as he can go. And the first half comes to an end. So Gonzaga Prep has dominated the first half here in King Bowl 6, the AAA championship game. South Kitsap stays on the field in some questioning manner. But as you see the replay there, and Nelson getting some yardage, but not nearly enough. Maktoff and company jump aboard, and I guess... There's the entire Gonzaga student body jumping aboard right there as at halftime. Not a surprise particularly maybe that Gonzaga leads, but the margin of difference perhaps a surprise. The Bullpups, 17, South Kitsap, nothing. Yard field goal by Please that started it off in the first quarter. A touchdown run from two yards away by McKenna and a kick by Please to make it 10 to nothing. And then Aaron Robb went over from a yard out to climax a 59-yard drive and please booted the point to make it 17 to nothing at halftime. That has been dominated by Gonzaga. So the Bullpups from Spokane come to Seattle and uh, they aren't at all in awe with the ranking of South Kitsap, number four in the nation, number one in the state. Gonzaga says we're gonna become number one. And led by quarterback Fred Ulowitz, they have been the talk of the town here in Seattle in the first half of this one. Gonzaga had the football 15 minutes and 13 seconds to eight minutes and 47 seconds for South Kitsap. They had eight first downs, all rushing. South Kitsap had five, four by rushing and one by passing. In 33 plays, Gonzaga gained 131 yards to 89 for South Kitsap in 27 plays. All of the Gonzaga plays coming uh, on the ground, they are 0 for 4 passing. While for South Kitsap, they gained 56 yards and 19 carries. They gained 33 yards passing. Yulowitz has gained 95 yards in the first half on 14 carries, his longest gain of 20 yards. He's been the running star of the game. South Kitsap, Nelson has 31 yards and six carries, his longest gain, 11 yards. So the um, Gonzaga Bullpups as impressive in the statistics as they've been on the field and they lead it 17 to nothing and they'll receive the second half kickoff. 
Shillam to do the booting. Aaron Robb, number 25, deep to receive, along with Dan McKenna. Onside kick, try, ball is loose. South Kitsap has come up with it at the 49-yard line of Gonzaga. And that's number 81 of the Wolves, John Morrison, a 5'9", 153-pound junior. There have been some big plays in this game to provide momentum. Let's look at that kickoff again. There it is, dribbling. Now it's got to go 10 yards, and it does. And now there's the collision. And the ball is free, and the Wolves come up with it. Kelly Wakefield giving to Nelson, trying to go through the Middle East to the 45-yard line. Let me stand corrected. The fumble was, or the, excuse me, the big play was picked up by number 25, David Cook of the Wolves. South Kitsap trying to turn it around right here in the first moments of the third quarter. Steve Nelson, 175-pound senior, wearing number nine is the tailback. Number 33 is David Carter, 174-pound senior at fullback. Kelly Wakefield, number 17, is 165-pound senior operating the attack. He's back to throw. He's got Martin over the middle. Martin eludes the tackler at the 35, goes to the 30, 24-yard line. Dan McKenna makes the tackle. You watch Wakefield and Martin hook up right now. Now Martin shows you he can move right there. South Kitsap on first down, Wakefield again to throw, lobbing it for Martin, in the end zone, incomplete. South Kitsap looking for interference. And the big South Kitsap rooting section boos here as you look at the replay of it and see that Martin can't quite run under it. Ball at the 24 and a half yard line, second down and 10 for South Kitsap. Bill Meadows comes into the game and he goes wide to the left with Martin wide right. Wolves give to Nelson, he's hammered. No gain on the play. Met right away by number 70, John Sapolia. Sapolia is that nose guard, 190 pound senior. You watch him hit right here. Warding off a blocker and making the tackle. Just a great play by that middle guard of Gonzaga. Third down and 10, ball at the 25. It's actually 10 and a half yards to go. Wakefield to pass, firing for Martin in and out of his hands. As Wakefield had a lot of zip on it and Martin couldn't hang on at the 15 yard line. The Wolves trailing 17 to nothing. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. Will they pass up a field goal try? Apparently they will. They're in an I formation and a very hurry up offense. Nelson in a slot to the right. Penalty flags go down. 10 minutes and 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. It is a penalty against Gonzaga for five yards on the encroachment call. Puts the ball down to the 24th down and five. Offside the signal. And here comes South Kitsap on fourth down. Wakefield under center. Turns, fakes to Nelson, gonna wheel left, looking to throw, has his man and overthrows him incomplete. Jim Reeves was open, they had the first down for sure, and Wakefield overthrows him. Wakefield had a beautiful fake to number nine through the line, Steve Nelson. I don't know if we'll have a chance to view it again, Doug, here. It's Gonzaga's ball on the 20-yard line as South Kitsap has a great opportunity to start the third quarter, and they come up short. Simpson wide to the right. Ulowitz, the outstanding player in the game so far, the Gonzaga quarterback. 
McKenna and McKenna behind him, and Yulowitz can go nowhere. Houston Bark is all over him. Tell you one thing, South Kitsap's fired up here in the second half. They came out with the 12th man on their team, Doug. That's the big momentum. Gonzaga, meantime, there you see the play again. That's Carter at the bottom of the stack, and Tana Tongo atop it with Busenbark in the middle. Yulowitz on the keeper. Does a good job, but can only get back across the 20 to the 24-yard line. South Kitsap much more aggressive defensively here in the second half. You're going to see it again. A couple of missed tackles. Jody Martin came up on him, but Brian Tay and Tungo brought him down. Penalty flag is down now. The 22-yard line. You're going to march one off against Gonzaga back to the 11 on a half the distance to the goal line. Holding against the Bullpups. Second down, 18 yards to go with 9.09 left in the third quarter. Simpson's in with a play. Baxter in a wishbone for Yulowitz. Right up the middle to McKenna, and Booner goes across the 15 to the 21-yard line. So he gets the penalty distance back. It'll bring up a third and 10. McKenna was made by, met by number 25, David Cook. We'll see it again here. Jim Stanscar at the bottom of that stack, I think, for South Kitsap. On third and 10, Yolowitz gives to McKenna to the 23-yard line, and South Kitsap has held. The 45, David Brill, along with 25, David Cook on the play. Martin and Nelson go back now to midfield to receive the expected punt. Matt Toff to kick from the 10. They put the rush on him. Towering kick. Martin on a fair catch at the 48-yard line. And South Kitsap takes over once again with 7.38 to go in the third quarter. We see some of the South Kitsap fans and then the other side of the Bulldogs, excuse me, the Bull Pups. They haven't grown up yet to dogs yet, I don't think, but they're sure showing maturity tonight. Timeout is taken and South Kitsap gets some refreshments out there, along with Coach Ed Fisher. South Kitsap fans haven't given up. They are on their feet, cheering for their team to get going. With all that's been said and written about South Kitsap, Gonzaga came in unheralded to the Kingdom and have taken the play away, but right now they've got a snarling bunch of wolves on their hands, and it's going to be interesting to see. Remember, Gonzaga's great strength is its defense. They shut out Bellarmine 16 to nothing last week, getting an early lead and then just holding on. Bellarmine tremendously impressed with that Gonzaga defense. Comparative scores would indicate this would be a one-pointer. <laughs> South Kitsap beat Bellarmine 17 to nothing. Gonzaga beat Bellarmine 16 to nothing. Gonzaga leads South Kitsap 17 to nothing. Gonzaga in a championship game for the second time in their school's history. Losing to Sumner in 1977. Hopeful of spilling South Kitsap here in 82. Wakefield back to pass. Wakefield firing. Got his man in the flat at the 40. That's Reeves. Out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 
Kevin Corbett was there defending on the play. He missed Reeves a minute ago on a crucial fourth down call. He won't miss him this time on first down. There you see Kelly right on the money to Jim Reeves. Gonzaga's Kevin Corbett called on at the sidelines. It's first and 10 South Kitsap. Ball at the Gonzaga 33. There's a fake and Wakefield rolling to the right. He's going to keep the ball. 30, 25, 20. Collision at the 16-yard line. First down, South Kitsap. Wakefield limps a little bit as he comes up. Showing that Yulowitz is not the only quarterback on the field. You watch Wakefield turn the corner. And look at this. He's met head on with by number 12, Dan McKenna, and 33, Jamie Fitzgerald. Well, they two timed him, but not before South Kitsap has a first down at the 16 yard line. 7.22 to go in the third quarter. Gonzaga with a 17 point lead. South Kitsap's powerful Wolves trying to get back in it. New quarterback, and Nelson is dumped. Chris Collins is the new quarterback, 168 pound junior, and he gives to Nelson with no success. There's a loss of three on the play. You're gonna see it here. Look at that penetration. That's Nick Volk, number 53, a newcomer into the game tonight. Tell you, he stayed home on defense that time, and Got down around those ankles to do it. Collins to pass. Firing in the flat. He's got Reeves at the 10. Down to the six-yard line and just shy of the first down. Dan McKenna, the tackler. You'd never know Chris Collins was a sub-quarterback. Look at that pass on the money to Reeves. And Reeves with a second effort. Maktoff also helping out on the tackle. Third down and a yard just outside the six. We'll call it the seven-yard line. 6.22 to go in the third quarter. This one's not over yet. Gonzaga, though, has a 17 to nothing lead. The give to Nelson. Socks his way to the first down to the two or one-yard line. Top is there to finally make the stop. David Rill comes in now as a replacement for Shillam. There you see Nelson running hard and low. First down goal to go for South Kitsap. In that eye formation, Rill has come in to make it a power eye, and he's a blocker on that left side. There's a give, and the football is loose at the one-yard line. South Kitsap has recovered. You're going to watch it here and get a better look at it perhaps the second time around. Nelson, is he spilled? And that ball is up for grabs. Can't tell who recovered it, but I think he was laying on his back and it came right to him. Second down goal to go at the one. right is Bill Meadows, Reeves wide left. Here's a give to the fullback Carter for the score. We'll take a look at the touchdown once again here. Okay, Carter's in to get it. South Kitsap on the board. Shillam will attempt the point out of Wakefield's hold. Snap from center is good. Kick is up and kick is good. It 
is a 17 to 7 football game and you get a funny feeling about the momentum here in the second half. And you can see it now on the South Kitsap side. Belief will take you a long way, won't it, Doug? There's the touchdown again. Carter leaps to the end zone. So South Kitsap driving from midfield. And you had a look at the depth of South Kitsap on that drive because when Wakefield, the senior quarterback, went out, their efficiency did not drop off a bit when Chris Collins came in. Shillam to kick off now. Remember, they've already demonstrated their ability to onside kick. Rob with McKenna deep to receive for Gonzaga. set to go. Shillam with an eight yard run at it. Kicks for the sidelines. It's fielded by Gonzaga's number 83 and he's dumped immediately at the 30 yard line as Bob's sister cannot return it. So it's first and 10 for Gonzaga. They roll it at the 31. Number 75, Jim Stansgar, Stansgar, excuse me, was there to represent South Kitsap on the play. No question about South Kitsap's enthusiasm in the second half. They are a fired up team. Simpson wide to the right. Yulowitz calling the plays, has McKenna on a wing left. Yulowitz on the keeper. Laterals it off now to Rob. He's across the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. We'll get to see this option play again. Second down and about a yard as you see Rob taking that Yulowitz pitch. Gonzaga now needing to regain the momentum and sustain a drive here. Baxter in a wishbone behind Yulowitz. Give us to the second man through, that's Rob. He's at the 40, goes to the 44 yard line, first down Gonzaga. minutes and 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. Lots of action left in this AAA final to King Bowl six. Four state champions have been crowned. We're looking for the fifth one right here. Yulowitz on the keeper. Spilled on his tackle after a gain of a couple across the 45 to the 47. Bart Lovely was up on the play. Pick number 59 here, Steve Johnson fights up a blocker and helps spill him, and Lovely cleans him up. Johnson, 187 pounds senior. Playing defensively right now along that front line at defensive end on the right side. Gonzag on second and seven. Yulowitz faking to the fullback, rolling, keeping, pitching to McKenna. Penalty flag is down, and so is McKenna. We've got a holding call against the Bullpups. Meantime, the clock is running. Clock is running while they're talking that penalty out. 
3.09 to go, and finally they stopped the clock. Well, they had about six or eight seconds tick off while the penalty flag was down, and they were discussing it. Ball back at the 34-yard line after the holding call against Gonzaga. It's second down and about 20. Here's Gonzaga now. McKenna and McKenna are the running backs behind Yolowitz. Take to the fullback, back to throw, Yolowitz got McKenna over the middle, lovely jumps aboard, but it's not before they complete it to the 48-yard line, not enough for the first down, but a fine gain nonetheless. You're going to see it again here. See the little fake to the fullback. It's wobbly, but it's on target, and lovely is also on the receiver. It'll be third down and about three as they get it back across the 50-yard line. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Ulewitz does such an excellent job with deception, Doug. He seems to continually fake over and over into the line and, and catches up along with number 82, Matt Kenny, makes some good key blocks on the play. Coming in on the uh, play now, and here is Ulewitz giving off to Rob, and he piles his way down to the 46-yard line. Stace, I'm one guy you don't have to remind how well Yulowitz handles the ball. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> I fell for fake number one <laughs> in a big, big way early in the game. Okay, fourth down and a yard for Gonzaga. We'll see what the bullpups are left to do. Kenny now goes out of there as he and Simpson exchange places. There's South Kitsap's chief cheerleader, the man in the green shirt. Well, he's been stirring up the folks here in the kingdom. Gonzaga's going to go for it on fourth and short. Yulowitz calls timeout. Something happened he didn't like. And in fear that they would lose the ball there in midfield, Fred, perhaps they were going to try to draw South Kitsap offside with some kind of stuttering count. It didn't work, so they changed their mind and go for the punting unit. Leading 17 to 7 with the momentum having shifted the way it has, I got to feel that's a dangerous gamble. At any rate, Gonzaga will punt Maktoff back to the 41-yard line to kick. And they're going to take the full time out here. You're watching the state AAA championship football game from the King Dome in Seattle. And Gonzaga leads South Kitsap 17-7. But it's becoming some kind of a fight out there right now as both teams are really geared for this one in the second half. Arlington wins the state title over Franklin Pierce earlier today. North Mason beat um, Woodland for the A championship. Lacrosse Wash took the beat Clallam Bay in one of the B games, and Liberty of Spangle beat Mossy Rock 10 to 7 in the other one. So we've had four state champs crowned. Right now, Maktoff to kick for Gonzaga, and he booms a high one. Nelson down there at the 18 yard line to catch it, and South Kitsap will take over offensively. We'll see who's at quarterback now. The Wolves trailing by 10. A minute and 25 to go in the third quarter. Wakefield's back in at quarterback, so he's okay. Gonzaga Prep will rely now on that great defense of theirs once again. They will need to be great because they're facing the state's number one ranked team, team that's ranked number four in the nation. And South Kitsap will throw right there to shill them incomplete. South Kitsap has really gone to the passing game here in the second half. A minute and 22 seconds to go. Remember this Gonzaga team intercepted seven Bellarmine passes last week in that victory. South Kitsap beating Kentwood 12 to nothing and Gonzaga beating Bellarmine 16 nothing. As they shut out opponents in the semifinals and here today they battled tooth and nail. Wakefield calls his plays. Look 
second for Nelson. Hits Martin over the middle. He's at the 30. Goes to the 35. Out to the 36-yard line. Jody Martin, the leading receiver on the squad, 166-pound senior. And it's a first down South Kitsap at the 36. After putting on a few moves, Jody Martin's finally brought down by number 33, Jamie Fitzgerald, along with 44, Jim Eater. First and 10 now. Wakefield rolls one way, back to throw, has it almost intercepted. Number 42 for Gonzaga is Rick Bruyere, and he almost pulls it down, 165 pound senior. Pass was intended for number 83, Jim Reeves. This is a little bit uncharacteristic of South Kitsap to throw this much, but they're trailing 17 to seven. They need the big plays in a hurry here. 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wakefield pitching out now to Nelson, try to turn the corner. Gets a block at the 35 and goes to the 41. So he has five or six on the carry. 33 is Fitzgerald. Along with 43, Bill Jekyll. So it's third down and about five for South Kitsap now. Ball at the Wolf, 41 yard line. Shillam wide to the left. Wakefield to pass, firing a sideliner for Martin and it's incomplete. He threw behind him. Martin went right to the um, down marker and had the pass been on target, he'd had the first down. Wakefield seemed to throw it just a hair too quick. 45 seconds to go in the third quarter as into the game now comes Reeves. And South Kitsap on fourth and five said, we're not gonna punt, we wanna keep this football. Wakefield calls plays, looks for Martin, he's got it. Martin for a first down to the 49 yard line. You're gonna see it again and Martin will be as unstoppable this time. Fitzgerald's quick to get him, but not quick enough. First down, South Kitsap, still on the South Kitsap side of the field. Martin shaken up a little bit by that hard tackle and Shillam replaces him. Meadows is wide to the left. Pitch goes back to Nelson, trying to turn that left side. He's to the 50 and comes to the Gonzaga 48. South Kitsap grinding it out now. Four seconds left in the quarter. And we will not have another play at the end of three quarters. The score is Gonzaga Prep of Spokane 17, South Kitsap 7. Something to shout about on both sides of the field here at the King Bowl, as those are Gonzaga prep fans with a 10-point lead, while South Kitsap fans feel that their team is regaining its form. South Kitsap has the football. Just across midfield. 12 minutes left in the AAA championship affair. And there are the young ladies from Spokane have trekked across the state to watch their bull pups on the brink of a big upset. But they will be tested to the hilt if they do it, because here comes South Kitsap. Martin back into the game as a wide receiver with Shillam. 
Wakefield has Carter back in at fullback behind Nelson. Pitch to Nelson. Nelson going to throw that up back pass. It may be picked off, and it is. Down at the 20-yard line, it is Dan McKenna. So South Kitsap dips into its bag of tricks. Gonzaga comes up with a defensive play. 11.54 to go in this contest. Gonzaga now at the 21-yard line. Out they come with Yolowitz at quarterback. McKenna and Rob behind him at running back with McKenna the fullback, and it's McKenna the fullback up the middle for a couple of yards out to the 24 or 5 yard line. Second down and about eight as they got a couple to the 24. Here looking at the Gonzaga sidelines. With their lead and trying to hang on to it. South Kitsap with seven men right up front now. Yolowitz on the keeper. Finds the hole. Goes to the 30, to the 35, to the 39-yard line. First down. He was hit by Jody Martin and then brought down by number nine, Steve Nelson. Yolowitz has gained over 100 yards in this one for Gonzaga. He has run that wishbone beautifully. And there you see an example as Martin hits him first. Ball at the 39-yard line. First and 10, Gonzaga. Here's Yulowitz again on the keeper. Turns the corner, finds the same hole, 45-50, 46-yard line, South Kitsap. The 186-pound senior dazzling this crowd here at the Kingdome with his option play. Got a shoulder pad out of whack, and that's the only thing out of whack for him today. You'll see it again. Faking beautifully to the fullback, now keeping behind the block of McKenna. Running by Lovely there. And just refusing to go down. Met by basically the whole student body, the South Kitsap. Gonzaga now with a first down, moving into South Kitsap territory. Ten minutes left in the game. Wishbone give to the fullback and gets a yard inside the 45 to the 44-yard line on a quick dive. Gain of a couple on the play. 9.45 to go. Gonzaga trying to keep that clock moving as well because it's on their side now. Second down and eight. Fred Yulowitz brings his wishbone team up. He fakes to that fullback, scrambles along the line of scrimmage, and even when he stumbles, he's at the 40 to the 35 to the 34 yard line. I tell you, look at this kid keep his balance. Watch right here now. He had trouble with his feet right at the line of scrimmage, but he has been some kind of runner as the quarterback in that wishbone offense. Another Gonzaga first down to the South Kitsap 34. The Bullpups in high gear once again. South Kitsap gambling now with everybody along that line of scrimmage. Here's Yolowitz, the quarterback, gets maybe three, four yards inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That was Craig Hughes who finally brought Yolowitz down. They've been able to get outside that tackle spot. Look at that. And South Kitsap caught with its linebackers inside. Most of the day, the option has gone for the quarterback keeper. 8.41 left in this game. If Gonzaga beats South Kitsap, all of the state's undefeated teams will have lost in the King Bowl today. Out of the huddle they come. 
It's Sester wide to the right, Matt Kenny wide to the left. The fullback right up the middle, McKenna to the 21 yard line. And it's another Gonzaga first down. You see number 25, David Cook, shooken up on the play of the South Kitsap Wolves. Archie McKenna, 176 pounder at fullback for Gonzaga. $28,229. Now I guess it's been changed to $3,219 here at the King Bowl. So a fine crowd looking on as the five state championships have been decided in Seattle today. Gonzaga has Simpson back into the game now, and he's the wide receiver out of your picture at the top of the screen. There he is. Yulowitz, the quarterback, keeping, coming at you, lateraling it off to McKenna. And at the 19, he's dragged down by Jody Martin. So South Kitsap slows him down a bit on first down, but they still get a yard or two. Second down, as you'll see it here. Fake, the keep, the pitch. That's the wishbone. In full force, led by Fred Yulowitz. Tell you, it's a tough thing to defense when you have a quarterback like Fred Ulowitz of Gonzaga. Gonzaga trying to make it seven wins in a row to finish their season as the state AAA champions. Ulowitz giving off to McKenna now, straight ahead inside the 15 to the 14. Dan McKenna, 183 pound senior. Third down and about four at the 14-yard line, 6.55 to go. And the best thing about Gonzaga's drive so far is the amount of time they've used up because that's in favor of the Bullpups right now with their 10-point lead. And this has been a time-consuming drive downfield, just what they wanted. Yulowitz on the keeper. Inside to the 11, and it isn't enough for a first down, but it keeps the clock going with six and a half minutes to go and brings up fourth and short. Kevin Kraus makes the tackle for South Kitsap, and it's fourth and inches now. Yulowitz looking, deciding against a timeout with 6.15 to go. Wanting to keep that clock rolling. Macked off back into the game as you look at South Kitsap's coach, Ed Fisher. His team in deep trouble late in the going here in the King Bowl. Yola went straight ahead on the keeper, one of the few times he's been straight ahead all day, but he is effective enough for the first down to the eight yard line. And fittingly, it goes to the player of the game right now in my book, and that's Fred Yulowitz, the Gonzaga quarterback. He has been awesome here in the kingdom, 5.50 to go. You see him rolling ahead for the first down. We see number 45, David Rill, atop that pile. David has an interesting story, Doug. It's kind of an all-in-the-family story. Last year, his brother, Mark Rill, was an all-conference offensive lineman for the South Kitsap Wolves, but has joined the collegiate ranks down at PLU with the big play uh, football down there under Coach Frosty Westring. And also his father was in the action as he's been a two-time Little All-American back at Gustavus um, Adolphus in Minnesota. So the kind of football's been growing in the family there. Thank you, Stacy. That's David Rill, a 201-pound junior who has another year to howl for the Wolves of South Kitsap. But here in the Kingdom tonight, it's been Gonzaga howling as the Bull Pups came out roaring, took a 17-0 lead, withstood a surge by South Kitsap, and now have one going of their own. First down goal, ball at the South Kitsap eight-yard line. The proud and unbeaten South Kitsap Wolves, who were nearly spilled by Sammamish a couple of weeks ago, but got a late touchdown in Tacoma's Lincoln Bowl to win it 14 to 10. Now in real trouble. And that preseason or pregame look at the two teams by John Bomber, the Bellarmine coach, has not stood up as yet because he thought South Kitsap was the better of the two teams that his team lost to this year. But not so, at least thus far in this one. There is McKenna to the five. You're 
going to see McKenna again. Lovely turns it in, and he's got a lot of help on that one. Along with 99, Jody Martin. Second down goal to go, and the clock ticks. 5.22 left. Spokane could have its first state championship in the AAA ranks. They got one in AA last year. As East Valley won it and Richland won the state title. Here's Yulowitz pitching now to number 22 is in the game and he's to the three. That's Paul Casca, 155 pound senior. So Casca is down at about the three and it'll bring up a third and goal. Yulowitz again, coming up quickly to fill it for South Kitsap. Who is that, Stacy? Did you pick up that number? That's 99, Jody Martin. He came cross field to make the play. So Martin makes a big play for South Kitsap, but how the Bullpups have eaten up the clock here in the fourth quarter, 4.28 remaining. Cass on the wing. Yulowitz coming right at you on the keeper, decides to go the other way and is spilled for a loss on the play. It'll bring up fourth down. Four minutes, nine seconds to go in the game. That penetration came on here, you'll see it. 67 will come into your picture right there. 67's One. Craig Hughes, a 6'2", 195-pound junior for the Wolves. One of the few times in this game that Yulowitz has gone the wrong way, I'll tell you. <laughs> that wishbone has definitely brought them luck tonight. 345 and counting here as Please comes into the game. He started all of it with a field goal. And now they're going to take time out as they will try again. This one will be from the 18-yard line and be a 28-yard try. It could propel Gonzaga to a 20-7 to advantage. As it stands, though, South Kitsap's got to score twice any way you look at it. They could get a two-point conversion and kick a field goal later if they scored the touchdown, but that's a lot of do it in 338, and the way Gonzaga plays defense, the bull pups right now are in a precious position. They came in unheralded somewhat, particularly on the west side, but over in Spokane, the fans there knew what they could do, and Gonzaga has lived up to the reputation the Greater Spokane League has set as an outstanding football league over the years. Gonzaga may have changed its mind and going to go for it down there and leave they leave South Kitsap in tough position if they don't get it. If they do get it on fourth down and goal, Yulowitz faking, get a pass, has a man, touchdown, beautiful grab. Fitzgerald with a honey. I hope you get to see it again because that Fitzgerald stretches for this when you look at it. could gather in and I believe there was a bull pup that had been shaken up on the play out there on the field Doug so Yulowitz has done it all he has led his team he's now passed for a touchdown he's been the leading rusher in the game and the only dark spot for Gonzaga right now is a man is shaken up but here's Yulowitz Oh, what a nice catch again, huh? That Even the third pretty. time, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> so they will attempt the extra point. It appears to be, without question, the Gonzaga Bull Pups. 3.34 left, and they have just added to their margin. Number 13 is shaken up. And I'll tell you one thing, he deserves a hand from everybody here in the kingdom. Even South Kitsap fans are up to cheer for him. He's played some kind of game. Fred Yolowitz of Gonzaga leaves the...
from the very beginning. Pleased to attempt the point. Boots it high and true. No, it's off to the left and not good. Gets up on the play. So the kicker is roughed on the play. You're going to see the touchdown again and see Ulowitz hit it pretty hard by Carter there and Rill just missing on his chance to knock it away. Fitzgerald is delighted at the back of the end zone. And now they work over another Gonzaga player as Please had his leg clipped on the roughing call. and a half minutes to go and if it continues Spokane will claim the state title some of the crowd here and look at at Fitzgerald again a picture perfect grab it was a 79 yard drive by Gonzaga. They used up almost all the clock and Please has his right leg damaged as they ran into that kicker. Can't get enough of this play, huh? I'll tell you. Looks like a Seahawk catch in the end zone. <laughs> Jamie Fitzgerald, 168 pound senior. The touchdown makers, Fitzgerald, Rob, and McKenna. The field goal and extra point kicker, please. The trigger man, Ulowitz. Fred has been something else. Gonzaga now with a chance for the extra point again, and they may go for two with please out of there. And a yard and a half to go for the two-pointer. Reggie Anderson is in at quarterback now for Gonzaga. He's a 160-pound junior. He fakes to the fullback, slides into the end zone for the two points. So Reggie Anderson backs in for the two-pointer after that fake, and there was a little bit of a collision, but Anderson kept his quick feet and makes it 25-7 to on a two-point play. So Gonzaga's bullpups in a big, big performance in the kingdom. We'll get to see Anderson's conversion here. Now this is the Excuse first me, touchdown. The first touchdown. <laughs> and now we'll see if we can get the two-pointer by Reggie or not. She's a happy person, I'll tell you. Zaga Prep on the threshold of the state championship and taking it back to Spokane. And they're going to turn that 300-mile drive into about a 30-mile drive, I think. <laughs> it ain't going to take long to get back to the Inland Empire, I'll tell you. No matter what the pass, Gonzaga will just float all the way over. On a high, the Gonzaga Bullpups. Kicking off now is Steve Sanger, 155-pound junior, as their quarterback and their kicker have both been injured late in the going. And down it comes to the 30-yard line where one of the uh, linemen grabs it and he's out across the 37-yard line. Gonna have to wait and see who that is. Looks like Steve Johnson who returned it and South Kitsap takes over first and 10. 25 to seven is the score. 14 first downs for Gonzaga, 10 for South Kitsap. 
The Wolves have had only a couple of chances to howl because Gonzaga has just been dominant. Wakefield back to pass for South Kitsap. May run out of trouble. Firing on the run now to Martin, and he can't get it at the 50. Fitzgerald, who knows his way around that football, is defending. 3.04 to go in the game. South Kitsap now will be forced to pass on almost every play. Gonzaga in the playoffs beating Kamayakin 40 to 17, Walla Walla 19 to nothing, Bellerman 16 to nothing. That is impressive. And they've added to that here today. Wakefield back to pass. Going to be pressured and dumped. Ball is loose. They roll. It's an incomplete pass. He had started his arm forward. Number 62 for Gonzaga, Pete Wilkins, jumping aboard, 187-pound junior, but it's third down and 10. Kelly just doesn't have enough time. You see the hit there by number 70. John Sapola, and what a game that nose guard's played for Gonzaga. 2.59 left in the contest. South Kitsap is third and 10. The Wolves slowly up to the line of scrimmage now. The hopes of their great unbeaten season pretty dim at the moment. Collins has come back in at quarterback. He rolls, fires long for Shillam. Interception by McKenna on a great catch at the sidelines. You think there aren't some athletes on this Gonzaga team? You watch McKenna here. It's Chris Collins throwing the ball pretty well. Now take a good look at McKenna here. He's running out of room. Look at that. One hand to pull it in. One hand to save it. And down he goes in bounds. So excellent. Gonzaga turns back the South Kitsap passing bid. I was just going to comment, Doug, that was such excellent concentration. So oftentimes defenders try to deflect, and their concentration at times gets to be unzeroed. And so it, that was just beautiful. Every time Bellerman tried to come back last week at Joe Alby Stadium in Spokane, Gonzaga had picked off another pass, seven and all. And today they have twice really burned uh, the Wolves with them. McKenna for about three or four, and it's second and six now. Gonzaga just trying to make some first downs. Reggie Anderson at quarterback, 160-pound junior. Next year's QB for Gonzaga. 2.04 to go in the contest. Gonzaga prep of Spokane, 25, South Kitsap, seven. Give up the middle. No, Anderson keeping. And he's out to the 40 to the 41-yard line and near a first down. Gonzaga's quarterback's really deceptive. Running that wishbone. 140 to go in the game. The mighty have fallen here in the kingdom today. Column Bay unbeaten. Really whacked by lacrosse wash Tukna in a 30 to 12 decision in that B8 game earlier. Franklin Pierce unbeaten in 12, and Arlington took it to them to win 16 to 3. And South Kitsap unbowed till now, but Gonzaga has dominated this one totally. There's a give now as on third and short yardage, they get the first down to the 45 yard line and carrying the football, the fullback, Archie McKenna, number 37. As time ticks down, Doug, obviously one champion will be declared, but you cannot take credit away from the South Kitsap Wolves and the beautiful job that Coach Ed Fisher has done with them this year, along with the, their opposers, the Gonzaga Bullpups, who have proved themselves tonight under the beautiful coaching ship of uh, Don Anderson. They've come over from Spokane wanting it and obviously have done it. They wanted it badly and how they've played. They give up the middle with 40 seconds to go and Gonzaga's just running out the clock. For South Kitsap, it will be a bitter one to swallow, but they have had a great three years, lost in the quarterfinals a couple of years back, lost in the semis last year, lost in the finals this year. 23 seconds left. Gonzaga will reign supreme 
and Spokane will claim its first AAA championship. 13 seconds to go as Reggie Anderson calls plays. Goes back and hits the Astra turf at the 35 yard line, make it the 45 yard line, four seconds. Three, two, one, look at that celebration for the Gonzaga Prep kids from Spokane. They've done it all here in the Kingdom, and though disappointed, look at the sportsmanship by South Kitsap. Don Anderson's coming over to accept the congratulations he deserves. What a job he's done. They've won their last seven. They've won the one that counts, the AAA championship of the state. And in doing it, as Ed Fisher comes out to greet Anderson, and they have to look through the crowd now. These are definitely it is just a tremendous thrill for Gonzaga. I was just going to reiterate, Doug, these are definitely two class ball clubs along with the other class ball clubs that have played here today. This has just been a great event for the involvement of the schools with their, you know, the parents, the community, the cheerleaders. Everything has just been great today. There is a jubilant band of bull pups from Gonzaga. In succession, they've beaten Kamayak and Walla Walla, Bellarmine and South Kitsap, the best the state has to offer. And they're going off into the dressing room right now, the awards notwithstanding. Don Anderson stays out and he gets his hug from Gonzaga cheerleaders. They'll award the number two trophy to South Kitsap. And they're disappointed, but should be very, very proud indeed because they have played to the end here at King Bowl 6. You see Gonzaga now getting the word that they should return for their awards. They'll be held across the way, and Donnie Anderson still being received warmly. They lost to Coeur d'Alene, the Idaho State champs, 23 to 17 in their opener. Middle of the year, they were blanked by Shadle Park, 14 to nothing. But that's the only time they were shut out, and they just kept getting better and better. They finished up with seven straight wins, 19 to seven over University, 35 to 12 over North Central, 28 to nothing over Rogers, 40 to 17 over Kamayaka, 19 to nothing over Walla Walla, 16 to nothing over Bellarmine, 25 to seven over South Kitsap here in the Kingdom. And they surround their coach across the way and signify that they are number one. Gonzaga on a field goal by Please. John kicked it from 38 yards out with 4.08 to go in the first quarter. They were never headed. After that, McKenna banged over. Dan McKenna banged over from two yards out. Please kick the point and it was 10 to nothing. Then still in the first half with 3.44 to go, they moved 59 yards in 12 plays. And Aaron Robb, the sophomore, went across from a yard out. Please kick the point. It was 17 to nothing. South Kitsap roared back in the second half. Carter got a one yard touchdown run to make it 17 to seven. But in the fourth quarter, they went 79 yards, Gonzaga did, with uh, Fitzgerald catching a touchdown pass from Ulewitz for the clincher. It was 23 to 7. Anderson got a two-point conversion. Gonzaga goes on a victory lap. That's Jack Price, one of the WIAA officials, the principal at Lakes High School in Tacoma, presenting the trophy. Wendy Grandland of South Kitsap High, the principal, Ed Fisher, the coach. And Ed will express pride in his team, I think. He thanks the fans, and he thanks his football team. They took him a long way, 12-0 and coming in, but once beaten going out, but not without a great performance all year long and for the past three years at South Kitsap. And now, the Gonzaga Bullpups, who will face away from us, but face their loyal rooters across the way. And what a thrill it's got to be as Gonzaga taking on a team that was ranked number one in the state and number four in the nation and just taking it to them here in the kingdom. And the bullpups all kneel across the way as they get ready to give them the big one. 
The tall gentleman there in the middle of your picture is Cliff Gillies, the executive director of the Washington Interscholastic Activities Association. And there is the celebration for Gonzaga. They will come to the middle of the field. And we'll stay with it for that ceremony as the state champs are crowned. And let's give congratulations to the staffs of both schools. Ed Fisher, the head coach at South Kitsap, assisted by Lyle Ballou, Elton Goodwin, Dan Hubdy, Steve Reichman, and Dan Wifford for Gonzaga Prep. Don Anderson, the head coach, assisted by Bob Peterson, Clarence Hoff, Brian uh, Rekfe, and Jerry uh, Shapdelaine. presentation of awards and that giant football which will be carted across this state. I believe they'll definitely make room for it in their bus, Doug. Father Patrick Cowell, the principal, a athletic administrator, Nick Scarpelli, all here. Cliff Gillies holding that giant trophy. Father Howell will accept that award. He's going to be a proud principal of Gonzaga. They're paying tribute to Gonzaga Prep now. I think that's Jim Hutton, the president of the WIAA, who's addressing the bullpups. Representing Spokane, he's very proud of the Greater Spokane representative. And there you look at the champions of the state of Washington in the AAA ranks. And their rooters stay to the end to cheer them on. We'll hope that we can hear from Donnie Anderson before it goes. I don't think we can pick up his speech, but we'll try to relay it to you. <laughs> Giving credit now to the Gonzaga defense, and well it should, as in scoring 40 points against Kamayakan, they gave up 17, but from that point on, have they been stingy? Nothing to Walla Walla, nothing to Bellarmine, and seven hard-earned points by South Kitsap here in the finale. And there's the presentation. see Don Anderson kind of sneak it in from the side there and they're going to give the big one now to Gonzaga and they well they weren't bashful during the game who was going to take over but right now there's that trophy and James Hutton says it's emblematic of the state triple A championship for 1983 and you said it Jim they earned it, they deserved it, they have just been super in what is really the Super Bowl of high school football here in the state of Washington. King Bowl six. And I think that Don Anderson says it well, there's a whole bunch of seniors on the number one state, a team in the state, and all of them deserve our thanks. So there you have it. The state AAA championship goes to Gonzaga. There are no unbeaten teams left in the playoffs as each team that came in undefeated today, Clallam Bay, Franklin Pierce, and now South Kitsap has gone by the board. So the state champions are Lacrosse Washtukna, Liberty of Spangle, um, North Mason, Arlington, and Gonzaga Prep of Spokane. And so it's all over here in the kingdom. The final score is Gonzaga Prep 25, South Kitsap 7. The state championship goes to the Gonzaga Bullpups. So long, everybody, from King Bowl 6.